and we are live what's happening everyone welcome back to the punch perfect boxing channel before we get going today please make sure to like the video comment your prediction for this fight down below and if you are new please make sure to subscribe to the channel today i'm going to be doing my punch perfect preview and prediction for tim zhu making the first defense of his wbo light middleweight crown this weekend in sydney as he takes on brian mendoza I absolutely love this fight. I'm really excited for it. It's one of the fights on the boxing schedule that I've been looking forward to most. And it's because they're both bang in form. They're both bang up for this. They've both been on the best runs of their career. They've been knocking everybody out. Every time they've stepped up, they've just come through it with flying colours. And they look like they're the best versions of themselves at the minute. Brian Mendoza has seemed to figure things out in his career after a bit of a rocky time. Whilst Tim Zhu looked like he had some flaws and holes in his game that were going to be exposed when he stepped up. And he's ironed them out and he looks like the best version of himself and looks like a fighter that's improving both of these guys are on knockout streaks they've been incredibly active this will be their third fight in the last 12 months for both of them so i think there's no excuses here there's no inactivity there's no injuries there's no recent defeats both of them are coming off some of the biggest wins of their career and i think it's just going to be a fantastic matchup between two big hitting light middleweights I just think it's a wonderful fight. In a division that's produced so many of these good fights over recent years, the light middleweight division over the past decade or so has had 10 to 15 world-class fighters or fringe world-class fighters that on their day could turn up and beat anyone they could beat each other they could go and lose the rematch in emphatic fashion it's just been one of those brilliant divisions over recent years and this fight could spring up another shock result but really and truly i think it's just going to be a wonderful fight and a good test to see where tim's use at and is this going to be the start of a very long reign for the next great aussie world champion alongside jai opatire in the cruiserweight division i think it's a really exciting time and brian mendoza is a fan favorite as well so let's get into it today i could talk all day about why i'm excited about this fight but let me get into the details of why i'm excited where both guys have been recently and why i think they're both just on the best runs of their career and what prepares them heading into this weekend so we'll start off by talking about the uh, the home favorite here tim zhu who is now the wbo light middleweight champion not in the fashion that he would have liked to have won the belt or even potentially won more belts obviously that fight with Jamel Charlo was supposed to take place earlier this year we got delays because of an injury to Charlo so Tim Zhu's had to wait around for his undisputed fight but he's been taking fights in the interim but eventually we got the news that Jamel would be moving up to fight Canelo Alvarez instead that meant that he would have to vacate the WBO title and when he stepped into the ring against Canelo as soon as that first bell went the belt became vacant and was assigned to the interim champion, who was Tim Zhu. Now, I think there's a lot of fighters that uh, perhaps would be happy at being upgraded to full world champion, but I think someone like Tim Zhu, who's very ambitious and wants to go on to achieve more than just winning a world title, I think being upgraded would not necessarily be how he would want to win the belt, and I don't think he'll walk into the ring on Saturday night feeling like the champion. I think he'll ultimately want to go in there and get the win, and that will be him winning the title. But the recent run of form's just been spectacular, and I think he's silenced a lot of his doubters, silenced a lot of his critics. Now, I've never been a doubter in Tim Zhu. I've always thought that he was at least going to get to world level. But the fact that I now think he can go beyond that is because of his recent run of form. You know, he took on a lot of guys over in Australia against some of his uh, fellow Australians, the likes of Jeff Horn, the likes of Steve Spark, and those type of names where you're just kind of like... Yeah, this is impressive, but these guys are perhaps not really like middleweights. These guys can't really do much outside of, you know, fighting domestically as well. You know, Jeff Horn, especially the stage of his career that he was at and not really being a 154 pounder. Steve Sparks gone back down to 140 and done some big things. So I think a couple of those performances, I was like, OK, I'm not a believer yet. At the Takeshi Inoue fight, there were things that I really liked about that performance. But again, that was him stepping up against a guy that has kind of been in and around world level at 154 pounds. A big, strong, like middleweight. And he couldn't get rid of him, although he beat him up and battered him. He didn't quite get rid of him and it made you think, okay, that's the best test that he's had to date. And he hasn't been able to come through it quite as emphatically as he has done previously. So then you start to have question marks. He then goes over to the US and fights Terrell Gachet, which I thought was a fantastic... Uh, opportunity for him to expose himself to the US audience and kind of build towards that fight with Jamel Charlo. He got put down in the opening round and he responded emphatically to that by beating up Gachet and dominating him over 12 rounds and hurting him repeatedly and Gachet showed immense toughness to go the distance. But him getting caught early on by quite an athletic opponent made you think... 
is he really ready for Jamel Charlo? And he was pursuing that Jamel Charlo fight. That was the fight that he wanted. That was the fight that was going to be next for him. And at the time, I didn't think he was going to win. I thought, you had the perfect test over in America to see where you're at against an American opponent over in America to see how you would fare. And you got dropped in the opening round. That's the perfect opportunity for you to go back to the drawing board, work on a few things, figure out how to the, correct those errors and make sure that doesn't happen again against Jamel Charlo, who's the number one in the division, the biggest puncher that you're going to come up against in your career so far, a guy whose power carries throughout the 12 rounds. And I didn't like him jumping straight into that fight. But with the delay of that matchup, that's opened the door for him to have a couple of other fights where he could develop and improve. And he took the Tony Harrison fight which I think was just, I mean, one of the reasons I love Tim Zhu so much is that he isn't one of these fighters that I think we see over here in the UK and we've seen in America and we're seeing too much of it nowadays that just feels entitled to their world title shot and would just sit around, fold their arms and go, okay, well, I'll wait for, for my world title shot. And if I need to take a tune-up fight, it'll be against a nobody that I destroy inside three rounds. Instead, Tim Zhu has shown so much ambition and a want and a desire to get better and to improve. And him taking on that Tony Harrison fight when he already had an undisputed fight with Jamel Charlo locked up because at this point we didn't know that he was going to go and fight Canelo just showed so much ambition and him wanting to prove not only to himself but prove to the boxing world that he is improving and he can find ways to develop his game. And he went in against Tony Harrison. It was a fight where tons of people were picking Tony Harrison. They felt that Tim Zhu was a little bit too one-dimensional, a little bit raw still at world level and Tony Harrison with his experience and being one of the uh, best boxers in the 154 pound division and having beat Jamel Charlo and even given him problems in a rematch people felt that Tony Harrison could produce the victory over in Australia but that didn't happen Tim Zhu was fantastic he showed that he'd grown from the Terrell Gachet fight he wasn't quite as gung-ho he was a lot more methodical and he was spectacular and the way he broke down uh, Tony Harrison and broke down the, the supposed better boxer. He was able to walk him down, pick him apart, beat him up, break him down and get him out of there. It was just the best performance of his career to date. But for me, I was just so, so impressed. And it answered all the doubts and questions I had about him. Now, him getting put down by Gachet and him still having to get into him with Charlo, I still worry about the power and getting caught by those shots and how he's going to stand up to them. But it was the fact that we'd seen him learn and not get picked apart by Tony Harrison. Like perhaps we'd seen him a little bit against Terrell Gachet in those early rounds. So I loved the development that we saw from the Gachet fight to the Tony Harrison fight. And then again, you're still thinking, is he going to wait around for Jamel Charlo? Is he just going to wait to see what happens with that fight? Obviously, we get the news that Jamel is going to step in to face Canelo because his brother Jamal had to pull out. And even then, obviously, Tim Zhu would have been very frustrated because he's had to wait around but gets in with Carlos Acampo, who again, listen, is no by no means a world beater, but since moving up to £154 after losing to Errol Spence, had developed and was on a nice run, and against Sebastian Fundora, who's a world-class like middleweight, he gave him some trouble and some issues, and Tim Zhu got in again and just vented all his frustrations, all his anger, and just dealt with him. Just looked at him like he was another bum that was there to he was there to get rid of, and just absolutely walked through him, and it was so so impressive. And again, the the activity and not just waiting around and sulking and feeling entitled. I love that attitude from Tim Zhu, and it's been really impressive. And I've seen such de development and growth in his game that if let's say next year Jamel Charlo came back down to one fifty four, I'd pick Tim Zhu to beat him all day long. Not because of what Jamel's uh, performance looked like against Canelo, where he didn't really try. I think back down at 154, we'd see the best of Jamel once again. But I think we've just seen such an improvement in Tim Zhu, such activity, such growth, and such belief that I think he can beat Jamel Charlo at this stage. I really do. I think the only person I'd probably back to beat Tim Zhu, in all honesty, don't want to give away the Brian Mendoza pick for this weekend, but I think Terence Crawford could come up and give him some problems. But apart from that, at 154 right now, I think he's the number one in the division and the best fighter in that weight class, in my opinion. So that's a little bit about Tim Zhu and why I've been so impressed with him and why I think he's just in the best form at the minute. He's just full of confidence. He's knocking everyone out. He's got so much belief. Because there was a point against Takeshi Inoue and against Terrell Gachet where you have question marks about his power at world level. He's put that to bed with the Tony Harrison and Campo performances, and I think we could see it again this weekend. Moving on, though, to his opponent, Brian Mendoza. 
I mean, we've just seen this past weekend in the UK that you can never count out Lee Wood. I mean, Brian Mendoza against Sebastian Fundora in that last fight was just... It just took your breath away. It was spectacular. Brian Mendoza, you know, kind of coming through, didn't really pull up any trees. He suffered a close uh, points defeat to Larry Gomez, then suffered a defeat to Jesus Ramos, who, although that hasn't aged well because Jesus Ramos has just gone and lost to Eriksen Lubin, again, a sign of this light middleweight division where anyone can lose to anyone on their day. The underdog always seems to prevail at light middleweight. That was a very close fight that I think Jesus Ramos deserved to win, but didn't quite do enough to claim it was a robbery. But still, nonetheless, he's a very good light middleweight. And ultimately, Brian Mendoza just wasn't good enough to deal with him that night. Jesus Ramos is very consistent. He walks you down. He throws a lot of punches. Just wasn't a good style for uh, for Brian Mendoza. But since then, he said himself that he was caught between styles during those days and featuring on top rank undercards. No one really believed in him and he didn't really have much self-belief and he was caught between styles. He came back after that Jesus Ramos fight and went and got a win over Benjamin Whitaker. And then since then, his last two fights have just been so, so impressive. The win over Jason Rosario, former unified light middleweight champion who has his flaws. He's very chinny, doesn't like getting hit to the body either. But Brian Mendoza was still an underdog for that fight and I actually backed him to win it quite confidently because I felt he had the power, the belief to go in there and get rid of a very vulnerable Jason Rosario and he went in there and did that. He was absolutely brilliant. He dominated the fight before getting rid of him. He showed his power. He looked so confident and ensured in himself and in his performance. And then from there, you're thinking, okay, what opportunity can he go out there and get? And can he go into a big fight as the favourite, potentially? Nope. He gets put in with Sebastian Fundora, the towering inferno, who at six foot five, six foot six, whatever he is, just looks like an absolute freak at light middleweight. I mean that in the nicest way possible. Big, tall, lanky, doesn't stop throwing punches, has a decent chin. And you just think, yeah, this isn't a nice stylistic matchup, especially as we'd seen against Jesus Ramos, a guy that's big, comes forward, throws a lot of punches, isn't really a style that suits Brian Mendoza. And in that fight, don't get me wrong, even as the underdog he was getting, put under pressure by Fondora, and you started to think, okay, Fondora's coming into this now, he's starting to put the pressure on as he does, kind of like we saw against Ericsson Lubin, where he just starts to take over and just starts to get on top. It can become very hard to weather the storm against him. For all the improvement and um, changes and, and focusing more on one style we've seen from Brian Mendoza, that was him just planting his feet and using pure instinct, gut, will, power, and just throwing a shot and just committing to a shot and hoping that it was enough to stop Fundora in his tracks. And boy, was it the perfect punch. Just put him down and Fundora just couldn't recover and it caused one of the best upsets of the year so far. Now heading into it, I think you now look at the result and go, they're actually evenly matched Mendoza and Fundora. But Fundora was destined to win a world title, was destined for big things and was destined to go in with the likes of Charlo and Tim Zhu, etc. He wasn't expected to be beat by Brian Mendoza. This was supposed to be one of his uh, better wins on his resume as he builds towards a world title shot and he got put to sleep and it was just a beautiful shot from Brian Mendoza, a guy that had been down and out and got the big opportunity and came up trumps and it was just fantastic to see. And now he's just got a world of confidence, world of belief and he goes into this fight believing that he can beat Tim Zhu. I've heard him say that one punch knockout, he's going to have too much power. Terrell Gachet put down Tim Zhu. You know, Brian Mendoza is just full of belief and a fighter that's confident is a dangerous fighter and I think he goes into this weekend fully confident that he can get the victory. He knows what his style is, he knows what he do does best and he now knows what he needs to do and what he can draw upon if things get tough for him in there. So that's a little bit about both fighters, let's get into how I think the matchup will play out and ultimately who I think is going to win. I think for Brian Mendoza it's all about the start, I think we saw against, um, I think we saw in the Tim Zhu versus Terrell Gachet fight. And again, I don't want to harp on too much about that because I think he is an improved fighter since then. But I think if you let Tim Zhu find his groove instantly, you're in for a rough night because the body shots, the way he breaks you down, the consistency of his attacks, the menace in his shots, it's very difficult to live with for 12 rounds. And if you get under the cosh early, it's very difficult to then get back on top against Tim Zhu. We've not seen someone do that. We've not seen someone get put under the cosh against Tim Zhu and then turn it around. We've seen fighters like Terrell Gachet start well and 
build up a bit of a lead and actually get a little bit of comfort in the fight. But then Tim Zhu gets on top and turns it around. We've never seen anyone be able to take Tim Zhu into deep waters and turn the fight against him. So it's all about the start for Brian Mendoza. And I think if you see him in training camp and if you've seen the clips of his previous fights as well, I think he's going to look to move against Jason Rosario. We saw a lot of movement. We saw some movement against um, Sebastian Fundora. And I, but I think mainly if you just look at the training clips for this fight, everything's about movement. And I think he's going to make Tim Zhu have to come after him and, and chase him down and try and cut off the ring. That's a dangerous game plan because Tim Zhu has now proven that he can do that against a very good back foot boxer in Tony Harrison. But I think Tony Harrison underestimated what Tim Zhu can offer. I don't think Brian Mendoza will make the same mistake and won't get too confident in there. But I think the plan is to make him chase after Brian Mendoza. Brian Mendoza is going to look to outbox him, walk him onto a big shot and then look to do that over the 12 round distance. And perhaps at some point hope that one of those shots that he stands his ground with is enough to hurt Tim Zhu, then he can jump on him. He'll look to box a little bit like Terrell Gachet did. But Tim Zhu has now overcame those hurdles of him not being able to quite nail down an opponent, him being able to break you down to the body. I think in the uh, Takeshi Inoue fight, and against Terrell Gachet to some extent as well, is there was a little bit of headhunting. Once he started investing to the body again, that's where we saw that that's Tim Zhu's bread and butter. That's what he does best. And I think he'll look to do that against Brian Mendoza. So ultimately, I think it comes down to the start of the fight. If Brian Mendoza can start well, you know, make his uh, leave an imprint on the fight early on by hurting Tim Zhu or just letting him know that you step in this big right hand's waiting for you. That could cause Tim Zhu to be a little bit hesitant, like he was against Gachet, and it makes it difficult then for him to just build his momentum, build his confidence, and find his way into the fight. But if Tim Zhu gets off to a hot start, it then basically is going to become about can Brian Mendoza pull another shot from the gods like he did against Sebastian Fundora? Because that's ultimately what happened. He started getting under the cosh against Fundora and found a way to get out of it with one shot. He'll then be banking on that against Tim Zhu, who for me, I think he's just a little bit more clinical than Fundora, just a little bit more ahead defensively as well. Fundora doesn't really seem to defend himself. Tim Zhu seems to little be a little bit more switched on. So I think it's going to be a really interesting fight. I think if Mendoza can start well, there's a world in which he can make this a really tough fight for Tim Zhu. However, if he doesn't start well, it then becomes about can he just land one big shot. And he's got the power to do it. And we've seen Tim Zhu hurt against Gachet. A, a big athletic puncher can hurt him. But really and truly, my gut feel on this is that Tim Zhu is just getting better and better. He's overcome some of the struggles that we saw in some of those fights that I just mentioned. And that Tony Harrison performance gives me a lot of belief and confidence that he can go in there cut the ring off, make the ring seem very small to Mendoza, not give him much room to breathe, and once he starts working to the body, Mendoza really just doesn't have an answer and starts to look for one shot. But once he starts looking for that big shot, Tim Zhu will notice it, and he'll adapt to it himself, and he'll just start to pile on the pressure. Now, we've seen Mendoza against Fandora show his toughness. He showed it against Jesus Ramos, who is absolutely relentless. Tim Zhu, for me, is just a different physical specimen to both of them it's not so much his volume but every shot and the way he works for the body Tim Zhu is becoming one of the best body punchers in boxing he takes it out of you before he knocks you out he might not land the one big shot or the combinations that Jesus Ramos and Fandora land but the way he invests in the body the way he breaks you down takes it out of you before he then gets you out of there can Mendoza live with those body shots, especially on away soil where it just feels like the walls are closing in and the ring's getting smaller round by round? I'm not so sure. I'm going to say that Tim Zhu goes to points. The reason being is just that I think Mendoza is so tough and is just such a resilient character that I think he'll grin and bear it. I also think Tim Zhu's had such a good run recently against Tony Harrison and against the Campo that he has to come back down to earth just a little bit. And the Charlo fight is obviously a big frustration for him as well. But I think he's still good enough and just got to a level now and he's improving and confident enough that he'll have enough to break the Mendoza, hurt him, potentially put him on the canvas and potentially stop him late. That can happen. I'm not ruling it out. But I think my bet for this fight is going to be Tim Zhu around 7 to 12 or points. I'm not going to sit on the fence. I'm going to have to go for one or the other. I'm going to say that Tim Zhu, I said decision a second ago, but... Do you know what? I'm going to go rounds 10 to 12, Tim Zhu stoppage. But Brian Mendoza is incredibly tough and I like him so much that I don't want to pick him to get stopped. But I have to be fair here, Tim Zhu has blown me away in these past 12 months. 
I'm going to go for him to win between rounds 10 and 12. But Mendoza is so tough and has one punch that could change anything. Let me know your thoughts down below, guys. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel. Shout out to all my Aussie subscribers and shout out to all my American subscribers too. Hope you enjoy the fight. I'll catch you next time.